Well, I grew up in uh, New Jersey, and then I uh, went to school um, at the Ohio State University. Uh, from there, I uh, went into the uh, Army for a couple of years, and was actually stationed in uh, the Yuma area in Arizona, and that's where I got to know um, a little bit about the Phoenix area. I had an aunt to live there, and um, eventually, uh, by the, uh, 19, about 1985, made my way back to there and uh, started my career, uh, real career in law enforcement with um, the Phoenix Police Department. I did do uh, almost a year back in New Jersey. Um, in fact, that's the patch from the original department that was Caldwell Police. Um, but at that time, this 1985, meeting house prices were probably like 250. It was in the uh, New York metro area. And I just knew I would be able to afford to even live in the, in the town that I was working in. So uh, my wife and my firstborn were, we, he was when he was a year old, or and uh, we decided, you know, I decided it was time to um, make a choice, and like I said, went out to Phoenix and started uh, my career there, and went there for um, did various assignments throughout patrol and various uh, precincts within the uh, the city. There had really good base, got a, um, some more education, uh, certified public manager, and so forth, but. Um, uh, eventually I knew it was time to uh, take the next step and for me the next step was looking for a police job, police chief's job. So uh, I'd put my hat in the ring for a couple of places and eventually uh, uh, who would be my boss and my new um, next adventure was the city of Maricopa. He had received the chief's appointment and asked me to be his deputy chief as we started the department from the ground up. So in October uh, 2006, went down to the city of Maricopa and we started the department from the ground up and um, we both stayed there in various capacities throughout our career there for the five years we were there for, um, he went to Sin City Manager, I was a police chief and, and so forth and then we knew um, with the changes of uh, management and so forth within that city then it was time to do the next thing in, in the career. He moved on to be the chief of police at a reservation down there, and I eventually um, heard about the opening here through my daughter, who had been living here a couple of years, and decided to uh, uh, put my hat in the ring for here. I had been I had visited Haver probably two or three times um, throughout the past uh, two and a half years that she was here. I really liked it. It was a perfect uh, smaller size city and, and uh, intimate community, which I kind of had grown up in back in New Jersey, and um, so that's why I made the decision to put in for it and was lucky enough to be selected. I mean, the biggest experience was getting hands-on in every single aspect of the police department, from creating the internal affairs section and training the, the officers and detectives how to write and investigate the internal affairs, how to um, the budgeting was huge, uh, you know, created the budget from the ground up and uh, was, was got involved in every single aspect of the, from purchasing vehicles to purchasing equipment and be involved in the contract negotiations um, for various uh, things that we had to get for the department. So it gave me a chance to get hands-on, no matter what you can do in the police department, I had hands-on information from reviewing everything from homicide case to just regular cases of uh, graffiti and so forth that I was the first kind of supervisor, even the detectives and so forth. So like I said, hands on everything. Mm -hmm. So I would, I would never gotten that experience no matter what. Um, it, it's just, it's a unique experience, like I said, from everything from designing a patch and the badge mm -hmm. um, to getting cars on the road and, and again, again, getting the officers uh, trained up and, uh, you know, available to uh, take on the, those responsibilities. So it was a tremendous learning learning experience, and I think I bring that experience along with everything you can think of in the patrol division I saw in Phoenix, having been involved in, uh, like I said, every crime you can think of, trying to solve uh, first person on scenes on everything from homicides, suicides, um, you know, fatal crashes to any, you know the routine stuff. So. Um, that type of experience is, is hard to, to get in a 25-year career. Um, it would be pretty rare to have both of those experiences. So I'm very blessed in that, in that aspect. And then along the lines, you know, um, 
I've had several supervisors say if you want to do well, promote, and, and do well for your employees, um, you should be well balanced in not only the hands-on training portion of police work, but the educational portion. So I've got a master's degree and, and uh, gone to the uh, Northwestern University's um, School of uh, Police Staff and Command uh, to even broaden my horizon even more as far as when it comes down to uh, the supervisory aspects mm -hmm. and what the expectations are for uh, supervisory and command staff members. Um, how big was the department when you ended up leaving? Uh, uh, we had 53 sworn. Uh, we had started out, actually we had at the height of our um, hiring, we had up to um, 63, about 60, 65 people total in the department, and that did not include dispatching. Uh, we had a contract for dispatching with Pinell County. So uh, we, we, along with many, many in Arizona, experienced the, uh, the downturn in the economy, hit, hit hard and put a freeze on all kinds of uh, hiring and, of course, so that um, we had to kind of stay status quo since 2008 on the level that we were at. I think uh, from talking, I mean, just initially talking to people, I've talked to the uh, chief at the Border Patrol Station, I've talked to the sheriff, obviously. Um, I've, I've just recently talked to the, uh, one of our agents uh, with the task force. Uh, we have some, some um, information to put out there, some concerns. Uh, for example, the, um, the agent I talked to, the drug task force, uh, was talking about the abuse of prescription drugs that's high on the uh, agenda now. You know, years ago the concern was uh, methamphetamine and meth labs and all of this stuff, and that's kind of taken a turn now towards uh, the overuse of prescriptions and, and that kind of a thing. So I think we'll be putting some maybe possible PSA announcements out mm -hmm. about that kind of a thing to be alert, to be doctors to be aware of over-prescribing and, and patients be aware that once their uh, prescriptions are used, um, to use them, follow doctor's uh, advice, and then once they're used, to, to, to turn them in right here at the front. We have a drug disposal um, um, container right at the front door um, mm -hmm. and to make sure they don't get into the wrong hands, to make sure that uh, um, either relatives or whatever aren't using their, their prescription drugs. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one concern. Then another concern was um, I'm going through the, just starting to go through the operations orders that the department's been operating under and uh, I think we're going to definitely review that section by section and implement some things um, almost immediately. Mm -hmm. For example, um, we're going to update our, our um, national, I got information from the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, mm -hmm. or NICMIC for short, but um, we're putting up, uh, revising our orders on how to investigate for uh, missing uh, children, whether they've been abducted or just, just missing. Mm -hmm. Um, that's a critical component, and we're going to be working on that, putting a new policy in, in, in place within the next 30 days. Okay. Um, and you'll probably hear a PSA announcement on that, um, reference that. And those are just some of the things that we're looking at now as far as the total overall review of the operations orders.